Welcome to MQC, the Massachusetts Quad Ball Chat for Off Pitch Chats with Carson and Sierra. Um, first, we want to start off with a really, really, really big congratulations to MQC's own Harvard Quad Ball team for winning the program's first USQ Nationals at the D1 level. Um, it was a really, really, really exciting game to get to see. Um, and we were really excited to see how all the hard work, hard work that they put in this season paid off in the end. Yeah. So with the USQ season finally um, over, we are to the end of the MQC season. So last weekend, there was supposed to be the relegation game between BU and Brown. Um, unfortunately, the teams weren't able to compete due to some issues just with the team's post-nationals. Um, so Brown did forfeit the series, meaning that BU is going to stay in uh, MQC's Division I, while Brown will take their relegation to D2 for the following season. So that's going to mean for the next MQC season, D2 is going to be Brown, Middlebury, Tufts, and UVM. And then D1 is going to be Harvard, Brandeis, RPI, BU, and the newly promoted Emerson. But to kind of kick off the, the rest of <laughs> the MQC season going into, you know, kind of the close. Uh, we have the final MQC event, which is going to be the D1 showdown between Brandeis and Harvard to take that MQC Division I title. Yeah, the last time these teams met, it was February. I think this was Brandeis and Harvard's both first games of the spring semester. So. Um, and the score went 185 to 30 Harvard. So fairly lopsided, if you ask me. <laughs> Not close. Um, and Harvard is also coming off like literally winning <laughs> cup. Um, so they'll likely be riding a really, really high high. Um, and I think going into this weekend as well, like things on their mind is probably we won Boston qualifier. We won quad ball cup. Now let's go win MQC cup and get ourselves three little rings on the season. Yeah, definitely. We can dive into like, you know, what like performance might look like. I think really the only determining factor that might affect how the games look is what each team kind of looks like. Um, I know NQC champs in previous years has looked pretty different based off of like what the team's coaching staff like not cares about, but is prioritizing. So like last year was RPI and Harvard and Harvard I think had like nine players show up and their star beater, Jess Lee, um, showing off her athleticism and was chasing the entire time. She made a lot of people look silly, looked great, um, but they weren't really playing like in position you know like with what got them to the finals that previous season as well um and so then rpi had won that series and so i'm curious what it's going to look like i've been told both teams are coming out with everything that they got um, but i've also heard that you know some recruiting has also happened post nationals and trying to get some people reps before the end of the season just to you know get into the sport so i really think it's going to kind of come down to what the teams are actually going to prioritize in this event since you know harvard already has their their cup title do they want the mqc one um i think there's too many competitive people on the team for them to not try super hard but i think that's going to be a, a huge factor yeah and um i think brandeis is also coming off a really good weekend they're an incredibly talented team they performed very very well at uh nationals um but they like we said have struggled against harvard already this season just because their chasers and beaters just have like a strategic advantage and the last time they met like jess lee and david chen kind of just did whatever they want and the brandeis beaters didn't really have an answer for it mm -hmm. granted i think brandeis's beaters have improved a lot since february yeah. and i think that showed this past a couple weeks ago i guess um, Blue Dice had like a really, really close game against Blue Jay at Cuff that I caught the end of. And I think that that shows that they can hang in there with top level teams. I think Eli Fighter has a way to just elevate under pressure that um, kind of like just brings Brandeis to a different level and I think boosts their confidence because like when you see your star player like stepping up and making like a clutch catch in a game against Blue Jay to tie the game, you know, it boosts your confidence and also makes you believe that you can do it too. Yeah. And like, I don't know. I always feel like anytime it's like a Brandeis Harvard thing, it seems like, I think it's a little more negative over Brandeis. They are an incredibly talented team to, to their credit. It is just like, I think Harvard this year, especially with like some of the seniors that they have are like at a different level than a lot of other teams. And not just like in MQC, obviously they, they won the title. So like clearly they're, they're doing quite a bit right. Um, but yeah, Brandeis has a lot of talented people. You, you mentioned Eli. Um, I think part of their beater core, like 
looking stronger is the development of newcomer Anna Wang. I think she has looked really phenomenal, um, looking just a lot more confident and like I think getting more up to speed with the sport. I believe this is her first, maybe second year. I'm not entirely sure which, which year she's at. Young, um, nonetheless. Yes, young talent, nonetheless. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, I think it's really just for them about, you know, getting as many punches in as you can, not actually, because I know some teams <laughs> are car heavy, um, but, you know, mm. putting up the best effort that you can. Um, and I think no matter what, like Brandis has had a really good season, you know, I think the spring started shakier and they've really bounced back from that. So I think like putting up a lot of goals on Harvard is just the goal, um, even if it's not necessarily a win. I think, you know, they can always look forward to the next year as well, since I don't think that they have many graduating seniors at this point. Yeah. And I think, you know, they have a bar of, we put three on them last time, and we've improved a lot since then. Let's put more than three up on them this time. Yeah, not to be rude, but like, when the bar is sort of low, you can only go higher. <laughs> not, not, I, I understand. I've been in, on teams that have been blown out before, so like, I get it, but, you know. Barlow, you can hit it. Um, but yeah, since you know the USQ season's over, um, MQC is going to be coming to an end as well. We obviously want to be pitching um, some MLQ as well. Uh, so Boston has an MLQ team in the Boston Forge with their final try. It's going to be coming this weekend, immediately after the Division One champs on Saturday um, at Harvard's Fields. I'm not honestly sure. It's on Cumnock. Cumnock Fields. Yeah. Um, Sunday, going to be the exact same time, 1 p.m., same fields, so you can go try out there. Um, if you aren't in the Boston area, there's teams in New York, Washington, none on the West Coast, but there's a, a West League. Don't ask me about that, I don't know anything. Um, but I really do think MLQ is a, a great chance for a lot of young players to get just a lot of good exposure and experience. Uh, I think for a lot of players, especially ourselves, um, a lot of the development happens over the summer. You're playing with really talented people who can just give you non-stop pointers on how to fix even small parts of your game. So I think, you know, something to look forward to for all players. Um, there's also practice squads. So even if you don't want to like necessarily commit to the full roster, there's always options for that as well. Yeah. And it's also just like a great opportunity to like bring things back to your college team and help boost their gameplay as well. Yeah. I want to say the, the Harvard team that, you know, won it all. I think most of their chaser, not most, of their chasers, but like two or three of their, their top four. chasers. Four. Four. The, the number I'm not sure. Four. Yeah, final answer four on chasers. And then Jess Lee all played for Forge, um, whether it was the main roster or the practice squad this past summer. No, Leo did not. Leo actually played for Titans. <laughs> Too strong. Irrelevant. But they all played for a lot of teams um, and showed a lot of growth from you know their first season of college through MLQ, a lot of them are, are tried and true veterans of MLQ at this point. Um, and you really start to, to notice like the, the growth that happens. Mm -hmm. So can't recommend that enough. Um, if you're looking for something fun to do over the summer, it's a great time. Um, yeah, that kind of brings us to the end of a lot of the, the MQC stuff. Um, for those graduating seniors though, if you're looking for your next stop, uh, there are a lot of club teams that are local. So there's Boston Pandas, there's Bosney, uh, lots of different options as well, you know, across the, the U.S., wherever you might end up. Um, always feel free to talk to any M oh, MQC volunteers, whether it's like Harry Greenhouse or us, um, about potential options for playing in the next season. Um, a lot of teams have different goals and, you know, like what it kind of looks like. Um, so always happy to kind of chat through that. If people are interested, um, playing in club, definitely a different experience, but still a lot of fun. Just can't recommend that enough either. Um, but yeah. Um, so thanks for hanging out. Um, the D1 Championship Bowl will be between Harvard and Brandeis on Saturday. What time does it start? 9.30. 30, 30? I think. Between the hours of 9 and 10. Um, and it will be at Brandeis. So come out if you're feeling excited about it. It's supposed to be good weather this weekend. I'm excited about that. Yeah. And look forward to the Instagram for the, the post about who wins.